Hello again, everybody. Um, tomorrow is August Bank Holiday, and when I first caught my queens, I predicted that by August Bank Holiday I'd have workers. Obviously, that isn't going to happen now, but I'm aware that there are people that I've invited to watch my tutorial, um, or people who have found it anyway, who are ahead of me, as I keep saying, and very soon will be having your first workers and you're already starting to think about well what do I do next so what I'm going to do today I'm going to talk about this that we're looking at now outworlds and how you can have or connect an outworld to your test tube at this early stage um, so to give you an idea you should get a, between 8 and 15 workers in the first batch and the Queen should also time it so that once they're all out it'll take about a week to go from the first one to getting your, all of your pupa out but once they're all out there should be a, a new batch just turning to larvae at that moment she should have laid more eggs um, right um, when you've got pupa um, and yeah this was my colony last year on the 27th of September um, they were a very early colony caught in on the 23rd of June so um, they had plenty of chance to grow um, they went into hibernation on about 55 workers but that's exceptional um, you might manage sort of 20 or 30 is, is about normal um, and as you can see there's a, a relatively large colony there in quite a small space so if you watched my video um, starting equipment um, I introduced some of my equipment and test tubes I showed you that I use are glass quite large uh, 150 millimeters long and 18 millimeters wide and this gives me two things a it gives me this a, a big water reservoir so it's hopefully not going to run out and I'm not going to have to do test tube transfers of my ants because that's a nightmare um, and the second thing it gives me is this it gives me a large amount of space at the front of the test tube and as I've said ants don't need much space but what this now allows you to do at this stage is again in that um, starting equipment video I showed these things I said silicone drinking straws they're you know what I consider to be almost an essential for me um, what they are they're they're expensive plastic and they're not expensive they're cheap but they're not that plastic that cracks you know if I did this to a normal plastic straw it would crack it but as you can see these stay whole but they're still bendy still flexible and cuttable so what I do is I cut small little sections of them like this um, and then what you do is you take a piece of cotton wool and you make it into sort of a, a ribbon you, you try and stretch it out um, and once you've done that you just wrap it round the uh, length of straw and then put the whole thing into the test tube and this creates you cheap and easy way to create test tube dividers so that um, you can subdivide the test tube into two sections a section that the ants will consider to be their nest um, and another section which the ants will actually treat um, as an outworld uh, just popping it in there now I just made sure that the the hole was clear and obviously if there were ants still in there I wouldn't have been this I mean, I'd have poked the queen there I wouldn't have been that violent I'd have done it very carefully but um, yeah so what I've done then as I said I've now subdivided and they'd be quite happy in that small inner area that's quite enough room for them as you saw in the earlier picture that I showed my ants were in a, a space no bigger than that with with 55 of them but this outer area here you can now use to feed and what you do wiggle the outer cotton around like this just sort of threaten them a bit and, and, and if there are any in there and they tend to retreat through the tube into the inner area meaning you can pop food in do whatever you need to do stuff the cotton back in and then after a while they'll come back out explore and find whatever it is that you've put in that outer area and I find that's by far the easiest way to keep test tube colonies is to subdivide like this but you can if you want to you can get an outworld you can get 
any type of outworld really, but a small one will do. Um, and you can connect the test tube directly up to the outworld. Now, outworlds come, most if you buy one from an ant um, suppliers, they come with some sort of um, connector to them like this, that this one's got. Um, and this is just, this is what, what's in there. It's got little saw teeth on it there, which clip into the base of the outworld, um, into a little chamber. And then obviously it's got a connector, but that connector doesn't go on the test tube. So you need to get a piece of pipe to connect the two. So you need to get some of these. These are test tube connectors. And again, in my starting equipment video, I showed these. They come in different shapes, different sizes, depending on the um, company you use. But um, because I'm using a big tube, they, they come specifically for the test tubes that the company sells, which means that with my big tubes, yes, they go in, but they equally, they just fall out. Um, so what I do is I wrap cotton wool around, not cotton wool, sorry, just cotton, just normal cotton around the end of the test tube connector. And this then means that you get that snug fit. And as you can see, they don't fall out. And I've shown before in a number of my videos, I've got these in my setup with the cotton like that. And the ants can't get past it. It works fine. And then the other end, you put a pipe on. And I realized at this point, it's best to put the pipe on first and then put it in the test tube because it's quite hard. But the pipe, yeah, that fits snugly on the end. Then the test tube connector goes into your test tube and then the other end of the pipe you can connect up to your outworld. Um, and then your ants will go into the outworld to forage. Oh, and as you can see here, look, I'm shaking it about just to prove that my cotton method keeps it very secure and that it's not going to fall off. Um, yeah, and then your ants will forage out of there into the outworld. Now, um, some, t some companies use different lengths or different widths, sorry, of pipe. As you can see, this test tube connector fits with this one and didn't fit with the previous one. So sometimes you need to connect one piece of pipe to another piece of pipe that's different sizes. And I find you can slide the smaller one into the larger one, stuff it along so that you, you make a nice um, seal there. And actually, that's already looked quite tight. But if you're still concerned, you can um, tie a kitchen tie or something around there just to, just to secure it. Um, but yeah, you have to be a bit of a, a DIY sort of ant bodger to make all these things. Um, these are something I love. These are four-way connectors from Wakushi. Um, now, you have to buy the four-way connectors separately to these things. This is a link pack and you can get these with either holes in them or with nothing on them um, and then you can block off entrances like that with the nothing what, um, connectors or you can do this and you can keep the hole going but what these links do is once you've got it on which I'm having trouble doing um, once you've got it on it creates like a second groove that you can then slide something else onto so this is a uh, one that a piece of pipe can be connected up to and that goes on the other side and then I've created something that I can put a pipe in to a four-way connector except I haven't because I made a mess of it um, but I love them because it allows me even things like if my test tube does run out of water what I normally do is I connect the test tube that's out of water to a test tube that has water using one of these because it's got the air holes in it and Laceus niger take ages to move so I don't like a, an airtight system and this just they can move at their leisure then it's all connected up and again I should have learnt my lesson from earlier it's best to put the pipe in first and then <laughs> click the thing on and there we go so yeah you can play with these and have different things coming off them, be it test tubes or outworlds or whatever, and it gives you that little bit of flexibility um, to play around with your setup and what you've got connected to what. Um, and this was my colony from last year. Um, they were 15 workers when I connected them up to the outworld, and it was the, the full-sized outworld they're still using today, so the size of the outworld really doesn't matter. Um, your other option is what is called tubs and tubes, where you can take any plastic tub, um, Tupperware, container. It's best if it's got a lid, but it doesn't necessarily need to have a lid. Um, and what you do is you 
put the test tube directly onto the floor of the container. Um, as so, and then your ants, you can then take the cotton wool bung out and your ants will run around um, on the floor of the container and you could have a few rocks or sand and stuff like that in there if you wanted to. Um, paint the top layer here with Fluon, um, definitely, and if you're brave you could leave it open, but um, I would say put the lid on and then you're thinking, whoa, hang on a minute, lid, no air. What you can do, very, very straightforward, easy solution, is just cut a hole about the size of a one pence piece, perhaps, maybe a two pence piece, and then just stuff the hole with a piece of cotton wool, just the same as the bung in the normal test tube. Now, the biggest mistake that people make with this setup is doing this. They put the test tube straight in and pull the cotton wool bung out. And this just leaves the test tube completely open to the elements. Um, it will terrify your ants. Um, they will be worried about the security of the queen. Um, they will retreat right up to the wet cotton wool and sit there in a little protective huddle around the queen. It also lets all the humidity out the test tube, so it's not even a good environment for them now. So what you should do is use my trick from earlier, put um, one of those um, pieces of silicone straw in and create a narrowed down opening at the entrance to the test tube so that they feel more secure and it keeps the humidity in and then put that straight into the um, outworld. Uh, you don't have to use silicon drinking straws. You could, for example, drill a hole through a piece of cork or something like that and then put the cork in the end there. But yeah, that's a tubs and tubes setup. Thank you for watching and best of luck bodging a setup to give your ants an outworld so that you can feed them. Goodbye.